All right. Well, good morning, everyone. Thank you so much for joining us here on this uh, webinar here and our, our, our recent webinar series. This one today is going to be with our friends from Scale Computing. We are delighted to have them on the call and we're delighted that, that you all are here. We know that your time is valuable, it is a precious resource, and we are thankful that you're spending some of it with us today here. Hope to have you for about the next 30, 35 minutes or so. And uh, just let me introduce myself. If I haven't met you before, my name is Chad Voller. I am the Director of Technology here at TTX. And I have been here for just over one year. So just had my one year anniversary here at TTX, joined the team in 2021. Um, I, I have a few different roles that I play. Uh, the director of technology role titles aren't super important to us around here. But just to give you a little bit of understanding for, for my role here on the team, I function as our virtual CIO for those clients of ours who are our proxy clients, so our IT managed services offering, which we call proxy. Uh, I function as a virtual CIO for those clients and help run alongside uh, the IT owners of uh, the business and the organizations that we support as a source of advice and uh, counsel, if you will, just like, a, like an internal CIO would do. I also help manage and curate our product book. So, you know, we are interested in having um, not just things to sell to our clients, but things that make sense for our clients to have in their ecosystem, in their IT infrastructure. So if we're looking at a new product, we're vetting a new kind of solution, uh, I bring my voice to that table and we have those discussions internally. It's a big part of what I do here. And then I also help support the sales team when they are putting solutions together for our trusted clients and trusted partners. So I will help them um, just to make sure that we're putting in the right solutions, that they're right, rightly sized, that they're rightly uh, uh, rightly set up for what the clients actually need. So kind of function in a few different roles there. Uh, I've been been in this IT, uh, this IT thing, this IT industry for uh, just about 20 years now. Um, and I've had the opportunity to be both what I refer to as being an operator chair. So an internal IT person from help desk all the way up to IT director. Uh, had a great time doing that, have spent some really, really pleasant stops along the way prior to arriving here at TTX and having the opportunity to be part of this great organization doing the things that we do. I wanted to point out one thing that is really important to us here at TTX before I turn it over to the guys from Scale. And then at the end of the webinar, you'll also hear from a current scale customer uh, who is who is using a scale infrastructure uh, in everyday management and leadership in IT. And you'll want to stick around till the very end because we also have a, a special thing going on today. We have a drawing for a uh, for a solo stove fire pit. I'm trying to remember the name of that thing. Um, so it's it's pretty exciting. Uh, if you're on the roll here in the in the call, you'll get a chance to win that toward the end here. That'll be a fun dramatic moment when we close the close the morning out together. So, but I wanted to emphasize just one thing that we constantly talk about and think about here at TTX, and that is the idea that we are striving to be the most trusted partner that you've ever worked with. Period. And a big part of being a trusted partner is ourselves developing trusted partnerships and relationships with vendors and product producers that are going to enhance and make more secure and stable and efficient your IT life at your organization. And um, I not only are we partnered up with Scale Computing, but I myself have been a customer and an everyday user of Scale Computing platform in my own past as well. So we're excited because in our endeavor to be a trusted partner, uh, we have formed a relationship with Scale Computing, uh, leading hyper-converged infrastructure and edge computing uh, organization that has been doing great stuff for a long time, kind of a well-kept secret in the hyper-converged infrastructure space. Uh, we're really excited about these guys because they, they are a group of trusted folks as well. Um, we love our relationship with them. 
Uh, we've met these guys not just virtually. These guys have been in our place and hung out with our team. So we have uh, we've had them in and really enjoyed their company here just very recently. And we're very glad that they're uh, you know part of our trusted ecosystem here at TTX. And we're very happy to to kind of show you. Uh, what they're all about. So I'm going to introduce Tyler and Frank to you here in just a minute um, and turn it over to them. And then we'll have some dialogue throughout with them as well. And then again, you'll hear from a current scale user and um, and then we'll close it out at the end with our drawing. So without further ado, let me introduce to you Tyler Hoberty from Scale Computing. Yeah, appreciate the intro there, Chad. Very kind words. Um, so guys, quick introduction here from my side of things. My name is Tyler Hoberty, like Chad said. I am actually the regional sales manager for Scale Computing who covers the Great Lakes. So we line up with TTX. And then also on the line who we have here is a gentleman named by, by the name of Frank Seal. I always like to call him kind of the brains behind the operations here. He is our senior systems engineer. So I think for today's call, we're going to show you just a few slides. I can set the table, show you a little bit about scale computing, who we are, where we're headed. And then actually, uh, Frank will uh, show a few more slides and, and actually pull up a running cluster and really show you all the features and, and functionalities there. So with that being said, we will kick things off here. So like Chad said, we kind of like to call ourselves the best kept secret out there. We actually started in 2008 actually as a storage company. And then in 2012, we launched our first HCI product at VMworld. Our slogan was actually VMware. And as you guys can imagine, VMware politely came up to us and told us never to come back. So with that actually being said, we're going to be the market leader in hyperconvergence. That's not dependent on VMware or Hyper-V. We've got tons of customers out there, tons of systems deployed. You can see on the right side of the screen there, we do have a bunch of technology partners as well. Um, and then on the bottom there, the cool part about us guys, we're headquartered in Indianapolis, Indiana. Uh, we have an R&D team that sits in San Francisco. And then we also do have a global presence as well. The coolest part I think about scale computing is actually our support sits in-house uh, in Indianapolis, Indiana. So they sit right down the hall from Frank and I. So we don't outsource any of our support. Uh, we're 24-7, 365, and what you're going to find out throughout this presentation, um, we, we hope our support is, is the best experience you're ever going to have. So we've got tons of case studies out there um, on current customers, you know, on our website or out there just on the Internet in general. But what you're going to find is we're going to be the most reviewed, highest rated HCI vendor out there when it comes to these review websites. Obviously, Frank and I can talk you blue in the face how great scale computing is, but, you know, go on to these review websites, you know, the Spiceworks, the Trust Radius, the Gartners out there, type in scale computing, and what you're going to find is firsthand current customers raving about scale, you know, whether it be about our local support team, um, about the product or sell, or just simply, you know, getting rid of VMware in general. And again, this slide is actually going to show you know our competitors and where we stand from a rating perspective you know amongst peers like yourself um it's not analysts doing these ratings it's actually folks like yourself who are you know administering the day-to-day back-end infrastructure you can see here we've kind of overthrown the vmwares and the nutanixes you know when it comes to overall support uh product capabilities and, and just ease of deployment in general so I always encourage people, you know, after this presentation, go on to these review websites, uh, check us out. We've got tons of customers in the state of Ohio um, in general. So with, with all that being said, um, Frank now, he's actually going to do the bulk of the presentation here. He's actually going to walk you through a few more slides and, and really show you how we separate from others and do things differently from probably what you're currently doing today. Yep. Thanks, Tyler. Um, and so as, as, as Tyler alluded to, I guess I've been doing this IT stuff, as, as Chad put it, uh, for a little over 25 years. Every time I think back at how long I've been doing it, it it's, it's amazing. Um, but the way technology has evolved over this time is, you know, 
<clears throat> everybody's doing the same virtualization rehash that they've done since the you know the the late 90s right it was hey i go back and get me a, a big hunk of iron which is a sand setting somewhere and it could be whatever vendor i choose there and that'll typically network back to some switches and then i finally connect that to whatever my favorite server provider is hp dell something like that um, and then i got to choose my my weapon of choice here uh, am I going to cough up the money to, to buy the VMware stuff or am I going to frustrate myself and try to figure out how to get Hyper-V to balance out? And and so that was kind of the choices that people just repeated over and over and over. We looked at this and said there's got to be a better way to get all the, the great features of virtualization, you know, the high availability, the, the ease of deploying those VMs. But let's get rid of all of the negative pieces that kind of always rear their head up from time to time. The complexity of troubleshooting this thing. I'm sure you all have had the same experience that I've had through the years. If I'm having an issue, maybe I call VMware and say, hey, what's going on with this? And they go, hey, it's not us. It looks like it might be something with the networking. Call Cisco. And Cisco says, it's not us. It's your SAN provider. Go call them. And, and I turn into this whole circular <clears throat> kind of finger pointing that goes on between the vendors. Um, and of course, those vendors, they all have, you know, different uh, support contracts, different tiers of support, things of that nature, and just the cost that goes along with that. So what we set out to do is basically, let's consolidate this and turn it into an appliance, if you will, much like, you know, the firewalls and switches, it's, let's just turn it into Lego blocks. Um, so everything that you see that's typically in that traditional virtualization um you know, deployment, we've consolidated it into those Lego blocks. Stack on as many as you like. Start with something as simple as one if you want to. And as soon as I want that high availability, I can add more nodes into mix. Um, <clears throat> speaking of mix, I can mix and match those guys, you know, different size, different capacities, different chipsets, different generations. We've worked all of those kinks and bugs out. So now I can grow this as I want to, and I don't feel like I have those restrictions that I'm used to with other products out there. Now, other products out there, we're not the only hyper-converged product out there. We may be one of the first ones, but we're not the only ones. Um, but we did take a different approach. We said, let's eliminate the idea of a SAN altogether. I don't want to do raids. I don't want to carve up LUNs. I don't want to manage it constantly. I don't want to have to go do a two or three week course to figure out how to properly configure my storage. Um, so we eliminated the idea of it. Uh, our storage uh, is embedded right into the hypervisor itself. It's called Scribe, and that's unique to us. It's kind of part of the secret sauce there. What that does is it creates a pure block engine that gives the VMs direct block level access to that storage tier. I'm not going through virtual SAN controllers. I'm not passing through the hypervisor multiple times to get that to get that redundant right within there. This is what you see the other folks in the hyperconverged space do, the VSA, virtual SAN appliance or storage appliance. Um, not only is the data path just, just you know, long and tiresome that creates that latency, but it also has some hefty, uh, uh, hefty resource requirements. You know, typically each one of my virtual SAN controllers has to have anywhere from four to eight virtual CPUs. Um, each one has to have anywhere from 16 to 64 gigs of RAM assigned to each one. And so now I have to overbuy the hardware just to accommodate their kind of bloated software to do that. With us, again, everything's embedded right into the hypervisor. That gives us the advantage of efficiency. We can get into a lot smaller platforms than these other products can ever dream of hitting. So whether you want something, you know, half density of a traditional server that might fit into, a, you know, kind of a, a, a wall mount switch rack, or if even that's too large, we have what's called our HE150s. These fit in the palm of your hand here. 
Um, these work great for edge deployments. Maybe I'm a, a retail uh, environment where I have hundreds or thousands of stores across the state or nation, and I just don't have the IT resources uh, that can manage that traditional servers and SAN out there, but I still want those features. That's where these guys shine. But these aren't the only products that we have. So we have a full portfolio of gear. Whether you start on that small side, um, you know, this HC1000 family, I always joke and say this is probably our F150 because it's the most configurable, probably the, the most widely sold. Um, but if you have extreme performance needs, we have the 3000, which is all uh, NVMe, which is the latest, greatest storage um, out there. And then also, if I'm looking for that density, I want, you know, I want hundreds of terabytes, petabyte, things like that. That's where we can jump up to the 5000 series there. So that kind of gives you the idea of what our portfolio is. We can fit um, nearly any uh, customer size, customer need because of the unique aspects of our product and the portfolio that we offered there. And with that, Chad, uh, let me jump out of the slides here. Uh, and yeah. Let's go with the, the rest of the gig here. Frank, appreciate that intro. Tyler, thanks for uh, for your intro as well. Appreciate you guys today. And, and just to, to, to reemphasize how much we appreciate the partnership. Um, I know we have folks that are on the call from a variety of backgrounds in terms of industries and experience. Um, uh, I, I would like to just throw a couple of things out at you. Um, mm -hmm. When it comes to, I mean, you've mentioned the difference in the hypervisor, the way that rights are different and don't have to go through like man, what I refer to as management VMs. And I remember, you know, in a VMware environment, what if we're, if, if we're familiar with those, we probably have all run like a vCenter and, maybe a couple other appliances that consume resources. Can you, can you talk about just like speed and performance of not, not just the UI, but maybe even things like just, just the overall performance of how fast you can get things done and how easy it is to do the things that like a typical IT administrator would need to get done in an average work week. Yeah, definitely. So, efficiency that's that's kind of the key word that kind of once you start there then the other pieces start falling in place right so um you know as far as efficiency and performance there you know this this is a my live running cluster that i have in my lab environment it's it's a three node cluster this kind of gives me that high availability but one aspect that's, that's different for those that are used to VMware and things like that is we got rid of the idea of a vCenter server, right? That's, it's all well and good until something goes sideways on there, then it's not good or well at all. Um, so we've eliminated that idea. So it's uh, the, the management is, is tiered across all of the nodes in the cluster. So that way, no single point of failure there. Um, eliminating that need for that system. Uh, same way with the storage. When I stand this cluster up, I'm not creating RAID sets. I'm not creating different data stores and presenting that. Um, the the scale computing cluster is automatically seeing these these uh, these resources and creating those pools, creating those failure groups. Um, and then when I have different tiers of storage, like in this, uh, where it's a mix of spinners and SSDs, those other vendors, they typically force you to have SSDs or flash-based storage in there because they need that for write caching to kind of mask the fact that there, there's latency in their data path. With us, that's not the case. So when you want performance for particular virtual machines, I can pick and choose how to use those SSDs in here. It's not a right cache mechanism. So for instance, uh, I built this TTX server here uh, for this morning, but I've got three different hard drives mounted to this particular virtual machine. Maybe this two terabyte drive <clears throat> is old archive data. 
Do I care if it's fast? Do I care if it caches to SSD? Probably not. So me as the admin, I can tune this. I come in and I hit that more button. And there's a section here called heat priority. This is where it's going to look at it and go, hey, based on block analytics, it's going to create a heat map. It's going to analyze that two terabyte drive and say, hey, you know what? I really only see maybe 200 gigs of data that's consistently hit. So I'm going to put just those blocks on the SSD tier while the rest is, is setting on SSD. But in my scenario here, this, this is a, um, you know, this is an archive drive. I don't want it even doing that. So I can tune it down something low to where, hey, we've really got to start hitting data on that drive before it starts buffering it to SSD. Or in my scenario, I'm going to turn it off completely. I'm going to make that a zero. I'm going to make that drive nothing but spinning disk. Now on the same virtual machine, this 80 gig drive, you know, hey, maybe it's this is a SQL uh, database server. Some of the SQL components may be on the OS drive. So I want this to be a little bit faster than just my common file server, my domain controller. So I pick it up a little bit, right? Go to that. Or maybe it's, it's really important. Go to an eight. That's absurd, right? I'm going to have a lot more of those reads and writes will now occur on that SSD tier there. But this 500 gig database, this is the most, you know, this is the most uh, uh, important data we have in the whole organization. So I want this thing to be the fastest thing under the sun. Again, crank it up 10. That's ludicrous there. If 10 is not enough, though, they do go to 11. So when I do that, I've now pinned that drive to be all SSD. So very easily with just a couple clicks. You'll notice I've tuned the performance of that virtual machine exactly the way I want. I didn't, again, log into a SAN, a different interface, and try to figure out best practices around that. It becomes a very intuitive, second nature. And you'll find that as the admin, that adds to your efficiency in managing this. Three clicks, you can do nearly any task that you want to do, whether it's deploy a brand new VM uh, from scratch, fill out a couple words, um, you know, give it some specs that you want, hit create, and you're done. I'm not tracking down which data store has free space, which host should I put it on. All of that automation takes place on the back end to make the admin a lot more efficient in running this as well. How's that, Chad? I, lo I love that. I just, I'm just remembering, um, like in the past, having to kind of like drill down and drill down, expand the nodes in a tree architecture menu on the left and click in the data stores and then, you know, edit, yeah. edit VMs and assign resources. I remember doing all that kind of stuff in kind of like a legacy VMware type of environment. And the way that you're presenting, it, it's just, it's so much, so much simpler. The, the performance stats in terms of capacity are right at, right at the top of the gauges of low stats. Yep. That's sweet. And the other um, thing, too, is is you can continue to add resources to virtual machines as well. You know, like I say, this 80 gig OS drive, man, I really wasn't thinking. I forgot I was going to put some other things on here. I, I really wish this was maybe 200 gigs in size. I can come in here and just say, hey, well, let's let's make this guy 200 gigs and I update it. And, it, you know, a matter of seconds, now that's a 200 gig drive, right? I've got to go into Windows and now expand, you know, stretch the partition. But it's very easy to add those resources to those virtual machines. Um, let's talk a little bit now. I know a lot of people today are concerned about business continuity. Mm -hmm. It's really become front and center in the business and organizational mindset over the last five to 10 years, especially. Can you can you describe how a scale cluster is resilient to uh, failures? How how does a scale cluster perform when uh, I lose a hard drive or I lose a node? Like and mm -hmm. and what what would it look like to have? I know some folks implement a disaster recovery node, like a whole separate node for uh, for DR type stuff. Can you can you help us out with the conversation as it comes to business continuity? how scale represents that and responds to failures of hardware and nodes and recovery stuff. Yeah, definitely. So um, <clears throat> everything is built to be N plus one resilient right out of the box. From the time I hit the power button on this thing, we've designed it. Um, I always joke, say it's, it's like a battleship. It's supposed to take multiple hits and, and still keep sailing along, get the mission done here. So, 
you know, uh, as I mentioned it at the beginning, we got rid of the vCenter server. So that single point of failure is gone. All the NICs that are within each node are redundant. The storage, the way Scribe does its, uh, its mirroring and wide striping, uh, we've got a ridiculous amount of fault tolerance when it comes to the storage tier. So, uh, for example, if I look back, so our TTX server is running on, on the second node here. Let's say during, you know, hey, first thing this morning, drive zero decides to, to call into work and not come in and, and gives up today, right? So that one goes bad. The non-event, right? Everything still hums along. Almost every product can do that, right? Uh, but let's say three or four hours later around lunch, drive three on this same node decides to quit on us as well. Still a non-event, right? In some products, hey, that that's now now we've got issues, right? With this, hey, we can keep on going. A third drive dies. I don't care. A fourth drive dies. A fifth drive dies. Everything is available. Everything is still working. All my virtual machines have no knowledge of the catastrophic hardware failures that are going on behind the scenes. We've built it to that level of resiliency. In fact, take one third of your storage. Take a complete node, chuck it in a dumpster. Now, it depends on the, the regulatory compliance you apply by. That might not work. But, but one third of your overall capacity could disappear. And I still can have all my virtual machines operate within here with no data loss. Um, so we've built it to that level of redundancy there within the hardware. Now, when you're talking about disaster recovery, that leads into kind of uh, other issues to, or <clears throat> not other issues, but other topics to where I can actually replicate these virtual machines across to other scale computing nodes. And that is just built in native to the product. I don't need any third party tools. I don't need any additional licensing. Uh, that's one big key takeaway. We don't have different tiers, right? There is no standard starter edition, enterprise plus. So every feature that you see is always included with each and every product, whether it's the really small handheld size ones or, or the big 2U rack mount guys, feature set is exactly the same. So that resiliency is in there. So as far as, hey, if, if the entire cluster goes up, well, I can link it to other scale gear doesn't have to be identical gear. This is a single node uh, that I have linked to it. In fact, if I come up to my browser tab here, um, this is a single node. It's just one big rectangle instead of three, but the management interface and all the functionality is still the same. I just don't have the local N plus one failover, right? Um, I would say I could go deeper into this, but I, I imagine you probably have a little bit more questions around that before I. No, that's talk. great. <laughs> that's great, Frank. I, I appreciate it. I think it's important that folks know that um, it's more than just a customized hypervisor. There are fault tolerances that are built in. You can lose you can lose physical hardware and still keep on going. You can lose mm -hmm. multiple disks. You can still keep on trucking. Your business will continue to run. Your organization will continue to operate, it, even in the result of um, of some kind of hardware failures, which we're all trying to mitigate against um, on on some level. Um, saw a great question pop up. We'll actually get to that particular question that just came up in chat a little bit later. But Frank, one other thing I would like to kind of think through with you is what what if a node does fail? What is it mm -hmm. like, as long, assuming that I'm under support with scale, can you describe a little bit of the support experience and support expectations in the event? Let's say I do have a hardware failure. How, mm -hmm. You know, wh what happens and how do I how do I handle that as a customer uh, going yep. for support? Yeah. So like you say this when there is hardware failure, let's say a complete node um, goes up and smoke on you. Uh, the good thing is if um, it should have been designed for that fault tolerance. So all your virtual machines will still be up and operational during that time. So it's not, uh, it shouldn't be a panic inducing kind of situation there. Now, what you would do is reach out to good folks at TTX or, or, or even scale computing support. Um, and what we can do is built right into the product here. 
is uh, remote support tunnels. So you can say, hey, this thing's offline, or maybe it's just not acting correctly. What's going on? Uh, you reach out to the support team. They'll give you a four or five digit code. You type in, you hit open connection, and that'll create an encrypted SSH tunnel back to our to our support team that's located in Indianapolis, Indiana. Again, it's never outsourced. It's never offshored, anything like that there. Um, they can remotely connect to the command line of the hardware and begin any troubleshooting, any resolution work for you. Uh, one of my favorite parts of this is you're not handcuffed to your desk now. So you don't have to sit on the phone, listen to them breathe and read the logs, right? You don't have to sit in a team viewer session and watch them uh, do all that. Go, You're free to go about your day. Um, and then when there's, uh, you know, once they've resolved the issue or whatever, uh, they can reach back out to you and say, hey, we've got it done. It, it's, everything's back up and happy. And then you come in and slam the gate closed and lock it, right? We can initiate this from the outside there. Um, so that that's an option there. Um, as far as that, when it comes to support, uh, but like I say, your, your team there at TTX, very well versed in this as well, too. Uh, a lot of times you guys are, are a great first line of defense on this as well. Yeah, well, it's, it's um, I think one of the things that makes scale a trusted partner for TTX. And as I mentioned, this idea of trusted partnership in the beginning, I think it is really, really important that people understand and appreciate the value of the fact that the support team is located here in Indianapolis, Ohio, in Indianapolis, Indiana, that it is a yep. stateside group, people that are uh, right here and easy to, easy to work with, easy to understand. And I think that is a really important part of what scale computing has to offer. So I wanted to emphasize that um, as well. And for the for the remaining part of our um, of our webinar here, I'd like to kind of like turn turn a little bit. Frank, feel free to to stay engaged here, but I want to engage mm -hmm. a current scale customer to talk about some of these things. Frank, you've shown us these things, and you know it's someone might say, "Hey, you showed that to us, and uh, you know it's in a lab. You know you you set that up and you control that environment." But what about a real world experience? Um, and let me say, uh, just before I introduce our next guest, that, listen, uh, TTX has folks in a bunch of different verticals that are using and leveraging scale computing. We have folks in the education space. We have trusted partners in the financial sector. We have people uh, that we work with that are in the accounting space. We have folks in the healthcare space um, that are considering uh, scale infrastructure. We have people in manufacturing that are looking at this. And I'm saying this because it's important that people know we, ha we have government entities that are entertaining this as well. In fact, uh, right here in uh, Strongsville, it's, Strongsville is actually a, a scale customer. So uh, it's trusted by people in multiple verticals, different environments from a lot of different angles. And and that makes, that makes it um, a really cool system and the fact that it can be used in so many different places. It's not limited to a certain vertical, and I love that about scale computing. But let me let me introduce Brian Smith. Brian, I really appreciate your time and you being on the call today. And I know that you are an active user. Um, you're a longtime administrator uh, of IT systems in a variety of capacities. And like I said, you know Frank can show us these things, and he's look, he's a scale guy. He's it's a scale cluster, it's a scales environment. But let's let's hear from you. Um, about some of the things. Now, I understand you recently went from a different environment sometime last year, and now your your group is on the scale computing platform. You have um, uh, you have a primary cluster plus a DR node, and you're using some of the backup vendors that are that are trusted by scale and scale computing platform. So, um, given all of that, um, can you can you just speak to it as a longtime IT guy who's been doing this? this IT thing even longer than me, um, talk to us about the speed, the simplicity, the UI, all the things, getting to your resources that you need to get to ease of use. I understand you have some younger system administrators that, that report to you as well. Uh, could you speak to how, how they are already kind of maybe able to engage and do the things that they need to do as well? 
Yeah, absolutely. And, and thanks, Chad and, and Skill folks for having me on um, and the ability to talk to everyone here. Um, my name is Brian Smith. Um, I am the IT director and cybersecurity practice lead at Bober Markey Fedorovich, which is a privately held accounting firm that does audit, tax, business, and transaction advisory services here in Northeast Ohio. Um, as Chad alluded to, I'm a kind of old dog in the industry. Uh, give, you know, I started early, early on in my life, so I have over um, 20 years in the game. And uh, over my my time, uh, I've seen my fair share of uh, various infrastructure and so and platforms. And during our last refresh a year ago, we went with scale computing for our hyperconverged infrastructure platform. And we went away from uh, SimpliVity by HPE a VMware stack, and it's been one of the best strategic decisions we have ever made. Um, and it, it and and uh, real quick, uh, why 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 I can say that is the biggest differentiator for us is that scale is efficient. Um, and I know as you saw through the demo, things are quick and simplistic. The UI is 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 it just. It has everything right there that you need to do. And, and having scale has allowed us here in the IT department to be more efficient with our time, essentially freeing us up to focus our efforts on what's important, which is for us supporting and defending the firm and our clients. Um, as Chad alluded to, we are a three person IT team. Um, both my team members are sub five years in IT and they were able to easily learn, use, and manage this environment uh, with scale. Um, again, we've been on for a year. Um, and, and, and again, and I, it's all coming back to that simplistic yet robust design. Uh, other platforms aren't so intuitive or efficient like VMware. Um, we would, you know, on our previous life, we would be spending a lot of time babysitting the infrastructure, provisioning disks, um, all that fun stuff. And then, when issues arose, you know, it was the finger paint pointing game, like Tyler early mentioned earlier, you know, between VMware, uh, is it VMware, is it the hardware vendor, is it Microsoft, et cetera. None of that is happening with scale. If, if you're like me and my team, we're already firefighting day to day, but we also have strategic projects and, you know, we also have the cybersecurity practice. So scale just made sense after we saw it. Hmm. Well, it's awesome to hear how it's working for you in real life and enabling you when you said it it frees us up to do the things that we really need to do i feel like that's sort of like every it sys administrator's dream like for for that for that to actually be true for someone who's working in IT, and we know that over the years it has been asked to just do more and more and more in every organization and when you have a solution that is doing more and more for you that's awesome. Someone actually asked Brian in the chat about what happens when you need to do an update. Um, I know you've had to do some updates over the last year and you know, like a firmware update, things like that. I know on other platforms you have to like shut things down and do all this stuff, but tell me what it is like for you to update that primary scale cluster that you have in your primary data center. Yeah, absolutely. Um, and I saw this uh, question come up in the chat and I, didn't want to steal anybody's thunder or start replying. I did reply to one earlier, um, one of the questions earlier. But uh, yeah, honestly, that was one of the biggest immediate wins for us was the patching. So with our old stack, which was you know VMware SimpliVity, um, and I'm not just bashing them. This it is what it is, right? Um, you know, patching was an awful experience. Um, they'll you know, a lot of these other platforms out there, they'll give you an interoperability ma matrix, which means you have to have certain hardware, firmware, VMware release levels, and OS firmware, yada, yada, yada. They all have to be in sync or stuff doesn't work. So it would literally take us multiple eight hour days on the phone with support engineers to apply patch. When it came to scale, um, it's literally push a button. If your cluster, like our production cluster, we have a, a three node, uh, a three host cluster for production and one DR node. Um, our production node, because it's multi-host, you can actually push the button um, to, to do the, 
to the updates, and you can do that during the online day without disruption. Scale is smart enough to round robin the hosts, the VMs across the host to avoid those that, that downtime. Now, we do have one workload on our DR node, you know, calling myself out here. Uh, we do, we got to take care of that. But um, in that instance, it's still push a button, but we have to shut down that VM uh, with the workload on it first because it's a single host on our DR node. But yeah, definitely, again, one of the biggest immediate wins for us. Um, we, we do them on holidays. We've done it during the online day. And, and unlike other platforms where you're constantly subscribing to you know, news and information sites to figure out what zero day or bug may be affecting that platform. Scale will tell you right there in the platform when, when you log in, hey, there's an update available, push the button. And, uh, and when literally it's, it's literally push the button and go. Um, on the flip side, you know, you know, the, I think the very first time we did do one, oh, we did have an issue. Um, so we pushed a button. It recognized that something was out of whack. I can't remember exactly what the root cause was. Um, it it immediately rolled us back. No downtime. As as it was as it was uh, mentioned earlier, the support um, we reached out to them immediately. Um, you you can um, click uh, a button to establish a support channel with the support here in the United States. They logged in, made a couple of changes, pushed the button again all as well. So I, I can vouch for the support as well. And one thing I'll mention too, with, with the updates, <clears throat> this isn't updating just the hypervisor, right? It's not one component of it. It will do everything in that stack, whether it's updates to the storage tier, whether it's flashing the firmware of the NICs in the hardware or the BIOS updates, um, and even new features as the product develops, a current customer, you get those new features. It's not, oh, well, you bought this last year and you only have a special ed certain edition. You don't get the new the new pieces. Nope, you get all of that kind of rolled into those updates. Yep. Yeah, that's that's hugely important. That's a, that's a huge ad. Thanks for adding that, Frank. Um, I, I had another question that came up from, uh, from someone that was asking about migrating from a VMware environment and needing to not necessarily do it all in one fell swoop and one of the cool things about the way that the migration works is that you can kind of do it at your own leisure when you stand up a scale environment you can stand that up next to your existing vmware environment and then when you are ready you can begin to migrate vms over uh, and your current vms can actually stay in production during the migration process because of the way the solution works and then when you're ready to cut over to the newly formed VM on the scale platform, you can then just cut over to production on the new VM. Everything gets staged and in a ready state, and then you move over from the one to the other. And uh, because you have your environments running in parallel, if something does go wrong, you can actually just power off the scale VM and power back on the VMware VM in the meantime, if you do have an issue. So there's a bit of a, uh, a safety net there, even during the migration process, kind of built in that, that resiliency effort. Well, uh, Brian, thank you so much for your time. It is great to hear from an end user who is doing this every day in real life. Um, and just to hear your comments on how it's impacting your ability to do your job and kind of feel like, hey, this lets me do my real job is awesome. Um, and Tyler and Frank, thank you so much. And to the, to the audience, I wanted to say thank you all for being here, for attending and for making us part of your day. And if, if you, there's, there's no way to say everything that can be said about infrastructure needs or the scale computing platform in you know 45 minutes. So if you have some additional questions, we'd love to, to talk with you and, and set up some time to, to chat. We can get on the phone together on a call with uh, Tyler and Frank, and we can answer some of your deeper technical questions or some of your more business related questions. And, uh, questions about support, whatever questions you have, uh, we would love to to get engaged with you on those things. Okay. So uh, once again, I want to say thank you all for coming. Uh, we we could not do what we do without those of you who are on this call. So thank you to all of our partners, our guests, our clients. Uh, we'd love to have you on to our next webinar. So watch your inbox, and um, we look forward to seeing you again sometime soon. Y'all take care. <laughs>